I'm, I, here's where I want to actually start. I don't know if you had an opportunity to hear the conversation that we had with Larry Fink. He spends a lot of time talking to some of the biggest institutions in the world. And I have to admit, I was surprised by his answer that he was not picking up uh, a, a lot of interest from the sort of pension fund institutional world, sovereigns and the like, because we anecdotally hear about that all the time. But I, I, I do think he normally has his, his finger on the pulse. And I'm, I'm curious what your reaction was to that. I think that we've certainly seen institutional interest in the crypto ecosystem probably over the last 18 to 24 months. And it's probably as robust as it's ever been. But it's only recently that the cryptocurrency asset class as a whole is probably now reaching an inflection point where it's large enough for sovereigns to begin to participate in it. So on that point, I'd probably agree with him. Um, but outside of that, you know, it's certainly something that's here to stay. And what we've been hearing from investors on the heels of the Coinbase listing is it's really signaling a certain level of maturation in the market that we haven't seen yet. And so when you think about where we are, you know, we focus so much on Bitcoin, but, but I, and, and I don't think there's a question about whether cryptocurrency or blockchain is going to be with us, uh, you know, for the future. I think the question that people are so concerned about is the valuation of Bitcoin and whether uh, this is something that, you know, goes to a million dollars a Bitcoin or some or, or, or potentially comes down uh, materially along the way, which isn't to say that maybe Ethereum or some of the other uh, uh, cryptos really emerge even more than they than they have already. How do you see that playing itself out over time? Investors are still diversifying into this asset class. I mean, if you look at the number of digital assets that are now traded with you know multi-billion dollar market caps, it's really encouraging to see how many of these projects are taking on a new life and gaining acceptance in the investment community. I think most investors certainly are going to have, for the foreseeable future, a core position within Bitcoin or within Ethereum. But we've definitely seen that investors are increasingly moving to diversify their crypto exposure. I mean, we now have 14 different products at Grayscale, and there's certain themes within that that investors really like, things like right. privacy, things like gaming, file storage. They're really beginning to see some of the other use cases of digital assets that have emerged. But, but are you thinking of them, and you just used an interesting phrase, digital assets. Are you thinking of these as assets? Are you thinking of them as currencies? I mean, I think that has always been one of the sort of central questions to the future of this. And, and it goes to, to some degree, how you might value a Coinbase, for example. Because if you believe ultimately it's, it's an asset, I'm not saying simply an asset, but if it's an asset, uh, then that's a trading business. Uh, if, you, if you believe it becomes a currency, then maybe you start to think about it as a PayPal or more of a fintech company in a different way, and that's a different valuation. I think it's too early to say, Andrew. I think in the developed world, the near-term use case um, isn't necessarily going to be for currency. Uh, we're certainly seeing the emergence of things like we've talked about before, Bitcoin being thought of as a digital gold or as a store of value. But as time goes on and you start seeing other application layers built in, you're going to see that some of the transactional efforts or the ability to move value around the world or cross border, et cetera, uh, begin to, to be unlocked. You know, we're certainly not talking to investors about Bitcoin replacing the dollar or being used in everyday commerce, you know, it's certainly in the near term.